Lovely. Oh boy. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. If I may, let me uh, I don't know, pop this up a little bit. Oh, guys. Settle in. What I tell you, there will not be enough popcorn for 2023. Here we go. All right. Grand jury charges that at times material to this indictment on or about dates approximately stated below. One, defendant Donald Trump was the 45th president of the United States of America. He held office uh, during this time. We know this. Hold on one second. Let me shrink this down a little bit so you guys can see the thing. And then I'll go control minus. There we go. That's better. Okay. So, uh, held office saying that President Trump had lawful access to most uh, the most sensitive classified documents in national defense including information from the agencies compromised intel over the course of his presidency he gathered newspapers press clippings letters notes cards photographs officially of the materials in, in cardboard boxes that he kept at the white house among the materials trump stored in his boxes were hundreds of classified documents the classified documents trump stored in his boxes included information regarding defense and weapons capabilities of both the united states and foreign countries united states nuclear programs potential vulnerabilities of the united states and its allies to military attack and plans for possible retaliation in response to a foreign attack that's the rants of probably two the un authorized disclosure of these classified documents could put at risk the national security of the United States, foreign relations, the safety of the United States military and human sources, and the continued viability of sensitive intelligence collection methods. At 12 noon on January 20th, 2021, Trump ceased to be president. As he departed the White House, Trump caused scores of boxes, many of which contained classified documents, to be transported to the Mar-a-Lago Club in Palm Beach, Florida, where he maintained his residence. It's not his home. He maintains a residence there. Trump was not authorized to possess or retain those classified documents. That's pretty fucking clear right there. The Mar-a-Lago Club was an active social club, which between January 2021 and August 2022 hosted events for tens of thousands of members and guests. After Trump's presidency, the Mar-a-Lago Club was not an authorized location for the storage, possession, review, display, or discussion of classified documents. Nevertheless, Trump stored his boxes containing classified documents in various locations at the Mar-a-Lago Club, including a ballroom, a bathroom and shower, an office space, his bedroom, and a storage room. A, a bathroom and shower. This motherfucker... And a storage room. Like, everybody talks about the storage room. And we know his desk. A ballroom. He just used a ballroom there. The, the same empty fucking ballroom where he sits and does all those weird two-seater interviews with no table. On two occasions in, in 2021, Trump showed classified documents to others as follows. July 2021 at Trump National Golf Club in Bedminster, New Jersey. The Bedminster Club. During an audio recorded meeting with a writer, a publisher. We've talked about this. This is part of it. Showed and described a plan of attack that Trump said was prepared for him by the Department of Defense and a senior military official. Trump told the individuals the plan was highly confidential and secret. He also said, as president, I could have declassified it, and now I can't, you know, but this is still a secret. Motherfucker, this guy's dumb. That's great. <laughs> but this is still a secret. Still a secret. S hashtag still a secret. In August or September 2021, at the Bedminster Club, Trump showed a representative of his political action committee who did not possess a security clearance, a classified map related to a military operation, and told the representative that he could not, he should not be showing it to the representative and that the representative should not get too close. Awareness of guilt, ladies and gentlemen. On March 30th, 2022, the Federal Bureau of Investigation opened a criminal investigation into the unlawful retention of classified documents at the Mar-a-Lago Club. Federal grand jury investigation began the next month. The grand jury issued a subpoena regarding Trump, uh, requiring Trump to turn over all documents with classification markings. Trump endeavored to obstruct the FBI and grand jury investigation and concealed his continued retention of classified documents by, among other things, A, suggesting that his attorney falsely represent to the FBI and grand jury that Trump did not have documents called for by the grand jury subpoena. He instructed his lawyers to engage in a criminal activity to wit, they would uh, be uh, acting in the furtherance of a crime, and they either did and therefore are criminally uh, culpable in this situation, or they didn't and they fucking quit, and they're trying to keep the fact that he told them to do this within their attorney-client privilege and failing miserably. Uh, directed defendant Waltine Nauta to move boxes of documents to uh, conceal them from Trump's attorney, the FBI, and the grand jury. This is the ones where the, he's trying to bullshit his own people. How the fuck do you keep that job? Suggesting that his attorney hide or destroy documents called for by the grand jury subpoena. Oh my fucking God. They, where's, the, where's the server? Where's the server? Where's the server? 
suggesting that his attorney, that means he's got testimony from his attorney saying this under oath, Hyder destroyed documents called for by the grand jury subpoena. The destroy part worries me less than the hide part. providing to the FBI and grand jury just some of the documents called for by the grand jury subpoena while claiming that he was cooperating fully and causing a certification to be submitted to the FBI and grand jury falsely representing that all documents called for by the grand jury subpoena had been produced while knowing that, in fact, not all such documents had been produced. So it wasn't even that he was ignorant. He was like, these are all the documents. And then, oh shit, I forgot about those. He knew And they have evidence that he knew he was keeping some while lying to the FBI and the grand jury through his attorneys that he was trying to get engaged in. The great thing is right now, uh, the Bongolio and that crowd are all reading this too. And they're not having the best time. They're definitely not having the best time right now. As a result of Trump's retention of classified documents after his presidency and refusal to return them, hundreds of classified documents were not recovered by the United States government until 2022 as follows. On January 17th, nearly one year after Trump left office and after months of demands by the National Archives and Records Administration for Trump to provide all missing presidential records, Trump provided only 15 boxes, which contained 197 documents with classification markings. On June 3rd, in response to a grand jury subpoena demanding the production of all documents with classification uh, classification markings, Trump attorney provided to the FBI 38 more documents with classification markings. By the way, that's the stuff that was in, it was uh, in an envelope, uh, wrapped in red tape and cellophane and sealed. So they were aware it was not declassified. If it was declassified and the president had magically declassified it when he was president and all that kind of shit, they would have just handed over a folder. But the fact that they went through the process of wrapping it up, his own lawyers went, they knew full well, they were aware that he had these things illegally. That just the just the framing of it, just the how they gave it back was proof they knew these were not theirs. Oh boy. On August 8th, pursuant to a court authorized search warrant, the FBI recovered from Trump's office in a storage room at Mar-a-Lago Club 102 more documents with classification markings. Defendant Nauta was a member of the United States Navy, stationed as a valet in the White House during Trump's presidency. Beginning in August of 2021, Nauta became an executive assistant to the office of Donald J. Trump and served as Trump's personal aide or body man. Nauta reported to Trump, working closely with Trump, and traveled with Trump. The Mar-a-Lago Club. The Mar-a-Lago Club was, uh, was is, still... Located at the South Ocean Boulevard in Palm Beach. When he sells it, we'll call it something else. I don't know what. Maybe we maybe we buy it instead of 666 and turn it into uh, at the uh, Hillary Clinton uh, Foundation um, for lovers of Jimmy Carter. Um, and included Trump's residence, more than 25 guest rooms, two ballrooms, a spa, a gift store, exercise facilities, office space, and an outdoor pool and patio. As of January 2021, the Mar-a-Lago Club had hundreds of members and was staffed by more than 150 full-time, part-time, and temporary employees. Some of them undocumented, just for the record. It's not in there, but it's true. Okay. Between January 2021 and August 2020, are you guys bored yet? No. Okay. This is exciting. I'm enjoying this. Okay. Uh, the Mar-a-Lago Club hosted more than 150 social events, including weddings, movie premieres, and fundraisers. Movie premieres. It means 2,000 fucking mules. But still. All right. Movie. Fuck out of here. And fundraisers that together drew tens of thousands of guests. The United States Secret Service uh, provided protection services to Trump and his family after he left office, including the Mar-a-Lago Club, but it was not responsible for the protection of Trump's boxes or their contents. That's where he's like, it's guarded by the Secret Service. It's locked tighter than Fort Knox. If you don't believe me, ask Anna de Rothschild. And if you don't know who Anna de Rothschild is, it's because she doesn't exist, but go look her up. Please go look up Anna de Rothschild. Hilarious. Okay, so... Uh, you can see the United States uh, did not inform. Okay. Uh, Trump did not inform the secret service that he was storing boxes containing classified documents at the Mar-a-Lago club. And he, that's so sad. He can't even throw the secret service under the bus anymore. Classified information. National security information was information owned by, produced by, produced for, and under the control of the United States government. Pursuant to executive order 12958, signed April 17, 1995, and amended executive order 13292 on March 23rd, 2003, and executive order 13526 on uh, December 29, 2009, national security information was classified as top secret, secret, confidential, as follows. 
information was classified as top secret if the unauthorized disclosure of that information reasonably could be expected to cause exceptionally grave damage to the national security that the original classification authority was able to identify or describe. Information classified as secret if the unauthorized disclosure of that information reasonably could be expected to cause serious damage to the national security that the original classification authority was able to identify or describe. So they have to, not only do they say it's top secret or say it's secret, but they have to describe why it would be secret, like who would be harmed and how. Information was classified as confidential if the unauthorized disclosure of that information reasonably could be expected to cause damage to the national security that the original classification authority was able to identify or describe. The classification marking no foreign so for not not reasonable uh, not releasable to foreign nationals no foreign yes it, uh it's 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 no foreign november uh not releasable to foreign nationals and denoted that dissemination of that information was limited to the united states persons classified information related to intelligence sources methods and analytical processes was designated as sensitive compartmented information sci where and the Sensitive compartmented information facility was called a SCIF, and Trump thinks it's spelled S K I F F. SCI was to be processed, stored, used, or discussed in an accredited, sensitive compartmented, uh, compartmented information facility, SCIF, and only individuals with appropriate security clearance and additional SCI permissions were authorized to have access to such national security information. When the vulnerability of or threat to specific classified information was exceptional and the normal criteria for determining eligibility for access to classified information were sufficient, or sorry, were insufficient to protect the information from unauthorized disclosure, the United States could establish special access programs, SAPs, which normally we would apply to anyone who works for Trump, especially lawyers who think they're going to get paid. But in this case, it's, a, it's an acronym. To further protect the classified information, the number of these programs was to be kept to an absolute minimum and limited to programs in which the number of persons who ordinarily would have access would be reasonably small and commensurate with the objective of providing enhanced protection. This is a, uh, this in, in spy movies, this would be, a, um, you know, need to know only. That's what the saps are. That's what they're trying to say. Only the people involved in the thing should know about it because if it gets out, it'll fuck up the whole thing. Oh, good. Pursuant to the Executive Order 13.526, information classified at any level could be lawfully accessed only by persons determined by an appropriate United States government official to be eligible for access to classified information who had signed an approved non-disclosure agreement, who received a security clearance, and who had a need, uh, had a need to know the classified information. That's a pretty tall order. After his presidency, Trump was not authorized to possess or retain classified documents. Executive Order 13.526 provided that a former president could obtain a waiver of the need to know requirement if the agency head or senior agency official of that agency originated the classified information uh, uh, cl one determined in writing that access was consistent with the interests of national security and two took appropriate steps to protect classified information from unauthorized disclosure or compromise and ensure the information was safeguarded in a manner consistent with this order which clearly is not putting them in a fucking storage room at a facility that has had over 150 weddings and 2000 mules premieres trump did not obtain any such waiver after his presidency. Trump did not obtain any such waiver after any such waiver after his presidency. As part of his official duties as president, Trump received intelligence briefings. Uh, we, we, this is back case, by the way. We can skip some of this. The PDB, the USIC's mission was to collect, analyze, deliver foreign intelligence. After his presidency, Trump retained... <laughs> Oh, excuse me. Trump, after his presidency, Trump retained classified documents originated by or implicating the equities of multiple USIC members and other executive branch departments and agencies, including the following. The CIA. CIA is responsible for providing intelligence on foreign countries and global issues to the president and other policymakers to help them make national security decisions. The Department of Defense, the National Security Agency, the National Geospatial uh, Intelligence Agency. That's a relatively new one. The NGIA. That's going to be a boogeyman. The National Reconnaissance Office, the Department of Energy, the Department of State, and Bureau of Intelligence and Research. Um, and they, uh, let's see, is responsible for protecting and promoting United States security, prosperity, and democratic values. Within the Department of State, the Bureau of Intelligence and Research uh, was a member of the USIC and responsible for providing intelligence to inform diplomacy and support United States diplomats. Trump's public statements on classified information. As a candidate for the president of the United States, Trump made the following public statements, among others, about classified information. This is awareness of guilt stuff. On August 18th, and by the way, uh, hold on one second. Uh, 
Um, you guys having good times? This is all right. Good times. It's I know I'm I know I'm running long, but this is fucking pretty sweet. Just say it. So all right. Um, this is there's 50 pages of this. There's no way I'm getting through all of this. Uh, Trump's political statements. In my administration, I'm going to enforce all laws concerning the protection of classified information. No one will be above the law. September 6, 2016. We also need to fight this battle by collecting intelligence and then protecting, protecting our classified secrets. We can't have someone in the Oval Office who doesn't understand the meaning of the word confidential or classified. Uh, one of the first things we must do is enforce all classification rules and to enforce all laws relating to the handling of classified information. We also need the best protection of classified information. Service members here in North Carolina have risked their lives to acquire classified intelligence to protect our country. He issued the following statement on 20, July 26, 2018. As the head of the executive branch, the commander in chief, I have a unique constitutional responsibility to protect the nation's classified information, including by controlling access to it. More broadly, the issue of a former executive branch official's security clearance raises larger questions about the practice of former officials maintaining access to our nation's most sensitive secrets long after their time in government has ended. Such access is particularly inappropriate when former officials have transitioned into highly partisan positions and seek to use real or perceived access to sensitive information to validate their political attacks. Any access granted to our nation's secrets should be in, in furtherance of national, not personal interest. Holy shit. This is like, why didn't he just hang a giant A around his neck? Shit. Uh, there, oh, it's got pictures. Trump's retention of classified documents after his, look, that's the ballroom. That's the ballroom. They're on the fucking stage. What the shit? <laughs> In January, 2021, as he, uh, was preparing to leave the White House, Trump and his White House staff, including an auto, packed items, including some of Trump's boxes. Trump was personally involved in this process. Trump caused his boxes containing hundreds of classified documents to be transported from the White House to the Mar-a-Lago Club. From January through March 15, 2021, some of Trump's boxes were stored in the Mar-a-Lago Club's white and gold ballroom, in which events and gatherings took place. Trump's boxes were for times stacked on the ballroom stage as depicted in the photograph below. In <laughs> fucking hell. That's amazing. What an, oh my God, please let the color pictures from this shit come out. Look at that. Jeez, he probably, it looks like he was up there for an auction. Like, okay, who do I hear? MBS, you get the first dibs because you like golf. Who do I, this box, it's all a mystery box. Honestly, we just shoved as much classified shit as we could in, intermingled with this. If there are any Time Magazine covers, they're not for sale. You got to give those back to me. But the documents inside, who do I hear? Do I, let's start the bidding at, who do I have the most debt to? What do I owe? Jesus Christ. In March 2021, Nada and others moved some of Trump's boxes from the white and gold ballroom to the business center, to the business center at the Mar-a-Lago Club. On April 5th, an employee of the office of Donald Trump, employee one, texted another employee at that office, and to ask whether Trump's boxes could be moved out of the business center to make room for the staff to use it as an office, because that's what it's for. Trump employee two said, whoa. Okay, so POTUS specifically asked Walt for those boxes to be in the business center because they are his, quote, papers. Later that day, Trump employee one and two exchanged the following text messages. We can definitely make it work if uh, we move the papers into the lake room. Employee one. Uh, there's still a, a little room in the shower where his other stuff is. Is it only his papers he cares about? There's some other stuff in there that are not papers. Could that go to storage or does he want everything in, in there on property? Yes, anything that's not the beautiful mind paper boxes can definitely go to storage. Want to take a look at the space and start moving tomorrow a.m.? After the text exchange between Trump employee one and two in April 21, some of uh, Trump's boxes were moved from the business center to a bathroom and shower in the Mar-a-Lago Club's lake room as depicted in the photograph below. Son of a bitch. There's the shower curtain. Is that the toilet? God damn. And this is so good. In May 2021, Trump directed that a storage room on the ground floor of the Mar-a-Lago Club, the storage room, would be cleaned out so it could be used to store his boxes. The hallway leading to the storage room could be reached from multiple outside entrances, including one accessible from the Mar-a-Lago Club uh, pool patio, through the door that was often kept open. The storage room was near the liquor supply closet, linen room, lock shop, lock shop, and various other rooms. In, in June 24, Trump's boxes that were in the lake room were moved to the storage room. Jesus Christ, they, they weren't in, remember the whole, they need to be in a storage room, they need to have an extra lock on them. He, remember how they told us they were in a storage room the whole time? No, they weren't. They were in a fucking, they were on a stage, then they were in a bathroom, then they were in his office, and then they were in the storage room, and then some of them went back there. Good Lord, this is fucking hilarious. Hold on, I gotta, I, I gotta, um, 
chat room. Damn, this is so good. Hold on. I need, oh, hold on. Get out of here. I don't need you anymore. Phew. Um, I just want to move this over here so I can see what you guys are saying while this is happening. Oh, my God. Please let the color pictures come out. <laughs> oh, God. Can you imagine? I, Judge Eileen Cannon is reading this or has read this. Ah. Uh, and direct the storage room on the ground floor of the Mar-a-Lago Club be cleaned out so that it can be used to store his boxes. The hallway leading to the storage room could be reached through multiple outside entrances. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Uh, on June 24, uh, boxes were in the lake room were moved to the storage room. After the move, they were there were more than 80 boxes in the storage room as depicted in the photographs below. Um, on December 7, 21, Nauta found several of Trump's boxes fallen and their contents spilled onto the floor of the storage room, including a document marked Secret... REL to US FVEY, which denoted the information in the document was re releasable only by Five Eyes Intelligence, including Australia, Canada, New Zealand, United States Kingdom, uh, the UK, and the United States. Not a text at Trump. I opened the door and found this. Not also a text. Two photographs he took of the spill. Shit. No wonder he's being indicted. One of the photographs that Not a text that the employee too is depicting below. Uh, with the visible classified information redacted. Trump's unlawful retention of the document is charged in, eight, in count eight of this indictment. Look, that's the picture of the shit that spilled. That Nauta sent to another employee. What the fuck? Trump's disclosed. Look at that. Look at this. No wonder he was touchy about the spill where they took. Remember when they took the documents out and they put them on the floor and they took a picture and there was one of the FBI. They put a little tent next to it and said, this is the stuff that from box number two in the office. And they marked it as such. And he was like, they made it look like I spilled shit all over the floor. The reason he was sensitive about that, besides he would be, is this. Because he knew about this picture. He knew that Nauta had taken and sent this picture. Shit. So his box brought to his summer residence. Oh, okay. In May 21. Trump caused some of his boxes to be brought to his summer residence at the Bedminster Club, like which is where the Live and Saudi Golf Tournament was. Like the Mar-a-Lago Club, after Trump's presidency, the Bedminster Club was not an authorized location for storage, possession, review, display, or discussion of classified documents. On July 21st, 2021, when he was no longer president, Trump gave an interview in his office at the Bedminster Club to a writer and publisher connected with then forthcoming book. Two members of Trump's staff also attended the interview, which was recorded. This Oh, this is the transcript. Upon getting uh, the writer and two staff members, Trump stated, look what I found. This was, uh, and he means, it says senior military officials plan of attack. It's Mark Milley. We now know. Read it and just show it's interesting. Uh, well, with uh, Milley, uh, let me see that. I'll show you an example. He said that I wanted to attack Iran. Isn't that amazing? I have a big pile of papers. This thing just came up. Look. This was him. They presented me this. This is off the record, but they presented me this. This was him. This was the Defense Department and him. Writer. Wow. No shit. Trump. We looked at some. This was him. This wasn't done by me. This was him. All sorts of stuff. Pages long. Look. Staffer. Hmm. Like they're going, hmm. Is that, you think it was what it was? Like, hmm. Hmm. Uh, Trump. Wait a minute. Let's see here. Staffer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Trump. I just found... I just found, isn't th that amazing? That totally wins my case, you know. Staffer, mm-hmm. Trump, except it is like highly confidential. Staffer, yeah, laughter. Secret, this is secret information. Look, look at this. You attack and... Trump, by the way, isn't that incredible? And by the way, they cut this part out because that's, that's the classified part. That's the fucking plan. That's what those three... This is removed because this... This is only the judge or someone with clearance is allowed to see that part. He fucking said it. By the way, isn't that incredible? Staffer, yeah. I was thinking because we were talking about it and, you know, he said we wanted to attack Iran and what, uh, Staffer, you did. Trump, this was done by military and given to me. Uh, I think we can probably, right? Staffer, I don't know. We'll have to see. We'll, we'll have to see. Yes, we'll have to try... Trump, declassify it. Figure out a, yeah. See, as president, I could have declassified it. Yeah. Now I can't, you know, but this is still a secret. Yeah, now we have a problem. Isn't that interesting? Jesus Christ, you're fucking done, dude. That's amazing. See, as president, I could have declassified That's what this was. That's, oh, shit. So more than likely, uh, you know, 
this this exchange came, you know, in you know, in the unredacted portions of this. At the time of this exchange, the writer, the publisher, Trump's two staff members did not have security clearances or any need to know any classified information about a plan of attack on country A. In August or September 2021, when he was no longer president, Trump met in his office at Bedminster Club with representatives of his PAC. Um, during the meeting, Trump commented that an ongoing military operation in country B was not going well. Trump showed the PAC representatives a classified map of country B and told the PAC representative that he should not be showing the map to the PAC representative and to not get too close. The PAC representative did not have a security clearance or any need to know. On February 16, 2017, four years after Trump's disclosures of classified information set forth above, Trump said at a press conference, the first thing I thought of when I heard about this is how does this press get this information that's classified. How did they do it? You know why? Because it's an illegal process and the press should be ashamed of themselves. But more importantly, the people that gave out the information to the press should be ashamed of themselves. Really ashamed. I, I like Jack Smith's work. There's a constant pinning of this awareness of guilt. Dur uh, beginning in May of 2021, the National Archives, I'm fucking going to keep going. We're just going to keep doing this. Is that okay? I know I'm going to run late, but I'll make up for it later. Beginning in May 2021, the National Archives and Records Administration, NARA, which was responsible for the archiving of presidential records. Well, let me move this over here, too. Uh, do I want to shrink this down? I want to shrink this down so that I can have it on here. Yeah, there we go. Um... The, let's see, beginning in the National Archives, Records Administration, I was responsible for archiving okay, between November 2021 and January 2022. NADA and employee two at Trump's direction brought boxes from the storage room to Trump's residence for Trump to review. On November 12, 2021, uh, Trump employee two provided Trump a photograph of his boxes in the storage room by taping it to one of the boxes that Trump employee two had placed in Trump's residence. Employee two provided Trump with the photograph so that Trump could see how many of his boxes were stored in the storage room. The photograph shown below depicted a wall of storage room against which dozens of Trump's boxes were stacked. On November 17, 2021, NADA texted Trump employee two about the photograph. Uh, it provided Trump saying he mentioned about a picture of the boxes. He wants to see it. Um, Trump employee two said, calling you shortly. On November 25th, 2021, Trump employee two texted NADA about Trump's review of the contents of his boxes. He says, has he mentioned the boxes to you? I delivered some, but I think he may need more. Could you ask if he'd like more in Pine Hall. Pine Hall was an entry room in Trump's residence. So they're just stacking them in the fucking foyer? Not a replied in three successive text messages. Nothing about boxes yet. He has one he's working on in Pine Hall. Knocked out two boxes yesterday. On November 29, 2021, Trump employee uh, asked, next uh, you are on property, no rush. Could you help me bring four more boxes up? Yes, of course. On 29th of 2021, Trump employee two texted Trump representative who was in contact with NARA. Box answer will be wrenched out of him today, promise. Next day, the Trump representative, I replied, uh, uh, one replied in two successive text messages. Hey, just checking on boxes. Would love to have a number on them uh, to them today. By the way, thanks. Like, subscribe, give a thumbs up, support the show, blah, blah, blah. I'm uh, reset. It's House Sparks Mornings, Mega Worldwide. We go a little loosey-goosey sometimes. In his, uh, a few hours later in successive text messages, 12 is his number. 12. Fucking 12. Trump says that's, that's all the boxes. That's, there, there are 12 boxes. While being in possession of that photograph. Good Lord. January 15, 2022. Trump's, uh, sorry, not a sent Trump employee to four successive te text messages. One thing he asked was for new covers for the boxes for Monday morning. Uh, can we get new box covers before giving these to them on Monday? They have too much writing on them. I marked too much. Trump employee two replied, yes, I will get that. Fuck, they had to change the boxes because he wrote what classified shit was in there. So like Iran stuff. Millie stuff, CIA stuff, blah. Like he made notes on the top of the fucking boxes and now they got to swap out the boxes. If he, oh man, they had, oh, please tell me they didn't shred the box tops because he's fucking dumb. 
Uh, on, and by the way, Trump said 12. They gathered 15 boxes from Trump's residence, loaded these boxes in Nada's car, and took them to a commercial truck for delivery to Nara. When interviewed by the FBI in May 2022 regarding the location and movement of boxes before the production of Nara, Nada made false and misleading statements as set forth in the count 38 of this indictment, including falsely stating that he was not aware of Trump's boxes being brought to Trump's residence for his review before Trump provided 15 boxes, falsely stating that he did not know how many boxes, oh, Trump indicted on 37 charges, including uh, violations of espionage, and, uh, 37, this is 37 LA Times, whoa, no wonder this document is longer, they just said seven, yeah, I guess uh, count 38 in this indictment. I, uh, I think it's more than 37, guys. Set for, count 38, that's 38. And that doesn't mean we're at the end. Okay, falsely stating that he was not aware of Trump's boxes, uh, falsely stating that he did not know how the boxes that he and Trump employee two brought from Trump's residence to the commercial truck for delivery uh, had gotten to the residence. And when asked whether he knew where Trump's boxes had been stored before they were in Trump's residence and whether they had been in a secure lock location, not a falsely responded, I wish, I wish I could tell you, I don't know, I don't, I honestly just don't know. Okay, that's, that is all a lie. Walt Nada, Waltine Nada lied right there in an, and they have photographs. They have texts about him moving it. They have visuals of that he and this other dude sent to each other, or this other woman, person, whoever it is. When the 15 boxes, this is so good. This is so good. This is so good. Uh, specifically, as the FBI later determined, the boxes contained 197 documents, classification markings, 98 were marked secret, 30 were marked top secret, and the remainder were marked confidential. Some of those documents also contained, uh, contained SCI and SAP markings. That's the top of the top. On February 9, 2022, NARA referred the discovery of classified documents in Trump's boxes to the Department of Justice for investigation. March 30th, the FBI opened a criminal investigation. April 26th, a federal grand jury opened an investigation. The defendant's concealment of boxes. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this would be the primary aspect of the case and the difference between, say, uh, Biden's lawyers discovering something and going here. The grand jury issued a subpoena to the office of Donald Trump requiring the production of all documents with classification markings in the possession, custody, or control of Trump or the office of Donald Trump, two attorneys representing Trump, one and two, uh, Tweedledee and Dumb, uh, informed Trump of the May 11 subpoena, and he authorized Trump, one, to accept service. On May 22nd, Nada entered the storage room at 3.47 p.m. and left approximately 34 minutes carrying one of Trump's boxes. Jeez, Christ, they've got the fucking footage, dummy. On May 23rd, the next day, Trump met with uh, Attorney 1 and 2 at the Mar-a-Lago Club to discuss the, the, discuss the response to the May 11 subpoena. Trump Attorney 1 and 2 told Trump they needed to search for documents that would be responsive to the subpoena and provide a certification there had been compliance with the subpoena. Trump, in sum and substance, made the following statements, among others, as memorialized by Trump Attorney 1. I don't want anybody looking. I don't want anybody looking through my boxes. I really don't. I don't want you looking through my boxes. Well, what if we, what happens if we just don't respond at all and, or don't play ball with them? Wouldn't it be better if we just told them we don't have anything here? Well, look, isn't it better if there are no documents? This fucking explains the, the empty folders. Christ, they're going to get electronic documents and this asshole is going to like have somebody like taking photographs of them, have Walt. Uh, we're going to find this shit on Walt's fucking phone, aren't we? Yeah, it's all in it's uh, all in Ivana's coffin. God damn. While meeting with Trump attorney one and two, Trump in sum and substance told the following story as memorialized by Trump attorney one. Uh, this other attorney, he was great. He did a great job. You know what? He said he said that it that it was him that he was the one who deleted all of her emails, the thirty thousand emails, because they basically dealt with her scheduling and we're gonna uh, and her going to the gym and her having beauty appointments, and he was great. And he, so she didn't get in any trouble because he said he was the one who deleted them. Motherfucker, he's asking his attorneys to throw themselves on the fucking grenade. Because he believes that shit. Ah, uh, so good. Oh, man. On May 23rd, Trump also confirmed his understanding with Trump Attorney 1 that Trump Attorney 1 would return to Mar-a-Lago on June 2nd to search for any documents with classification markings to produce in response to the May... And by the way, May 23rd, we already have Walt Nada walking out of there with a fucking box before this shit. After May 11th, they got the subpoena and he knows it happened. 
He meets with them after this fact, and then they're going to come back later. So between that moment and when his attorneys come back to do the search, my guess is Walt was busy. Um, Trump attorney one made it clear to Trump that attorney one would not conduct the search for responsive documents by looking through Trump's boxes that had been transported from the White House and remained in storage. Trump indicated that he wanted to be at the club when they returned to review his boxes on June 2nd, and that Trump would change uh, his summer travel plans to do so. Trump told Attorney 2 that Trump Attorney 2 did not need to be present for the review of boxes. So he's giving somebody plausible deniability. Good times. After meeting with Attorney 1 and 2 on May 23rd, Trump delayed his departure from Mar-a-Lago to Bedminster for the summer so that he could be present in Mar-a-Lago on June 2nd when Trump Attorney 1 returned to review the boxes. But Trump... Oh, this is so good. Oh, this is so good. Second indictment, there's another one that's come through? Well, yeah. I mean, this is fucking, this is a ton of shit. Between Trump's May 23rd meeting with Trump Attorney 1 and Trump Attorney 2 to discuss the May 11th subpoena and June 2nd, when Trump Attorney 1 returned to Mar-a-Lago to review the boxes, NADA removed, at Trump's direction, a total of approximately 64 boxes. From the storage room, 12. Motherfucker, 12. 64 boxes from the storage room and brought them to Trump's residence as set forth below. 64. All right. May 20. Motherfucker. On May 24, 2022, between 5.30 and 5.38, Nauta removed three boxes from the storage room. On May 30, 2022, at 9 a.m., Trump and Nauta spoke by phone for approximately 30 seconds. Between 10 and, uh, a.m. and 11.51, Nauta removed a total of approximately 50 boxes from the storage room. That motherfucker was moving. On May 30th, um, a Trump family member texted Nauta. Good afternoon, Walt. Happy Memorial Day. I saw you put boxes to POTUS room. Just FYI, and I will tell him as well, not sure how many he wants to take on Friday on the plane. We will not have room for them. Plane will be full with luggage. Thank you. Um, Nauta replied, good afternoon, ma'am. Smiley face emoji. Thank you so much. <laughs> Do you think this is M Melania trying to dodge this? Good afternoon, Fuck Mrs. Fuck Christmas. Thank you very much. I think he wanted to pick from them. I don't imagine he wanted to take the boxes. He told me to put them in the room that he was going to take, talk to you about them. On June 1st, 2020, uh, beginning at 12.52 uh, p.m., Nauta removed approximately 11 boxes from the storage room. On June 1st, Trump spoke with attorney one by phone and asked whether Trump attorney was coming to the Mar-a-Lago club the next day for exactly what purpose. He knows they're coming for that exactly. And he's just trying to check and see. All right. Attorney one reminded Trump that Trump uh, that uh, Trump attorney one was going to review the boxes that had been transported from the White House and remained in storage at Mar-a-Lago, so that Trump attorney one could have custodian of records certify that May 11 subpoena had been complied with fully. On June second, day Trump attorney one was scheduled to review Trump's boxes in the storage room. Trump spoke with Nada on the phone at 9:29 a.m. for approximately 24 seconds. Later that day. Between 12.33 p.m. and 12.52, Nada and an employee of the Mar-a-Lago Club moved approximately 30 boxes, less than half of the boxes from Trump's residence, to the storage room. In sum, between May 23rd, 2022, and June 2nd, before Trump Attorney 1's review of the Trump boxes in the storage room, Nada, at Trump's direction, moved approximately 64 boxes from the storage room to Trump's residence and brought to the storage room approximately uh, only approximately 30 boxes. Neither Trump nor Nada informed Trump Attorney One of this information. The false certification of the FBI and the grand jury. Oh, this is so good. Oh, this is so good. Oh, MSNBC showing the cl the color pictures. Whew. So fun. I'll just narrate it. You guys can have that on another screen. <laughs> the false certification of the FBI and the grand jury on uh, June second. As Trump had been informed, Trump Attorney One arrived at Mar-a-Lago Club to review. Had a mimosa in hand. And uh, was a, 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 obviously a collar made of Dalmatians around her neck uh, to look for documents with classification markings in response to May 11 subpoena. Trump met with Trump Attorney One before Trump Attorney One conducted the interview. Nada escorted Trump Attorney One to the storage room um, and stood weirdly in front of a bunch of other boxes doing this. I just got to move this. Oh, excuse me one second. <laughs> between five, uh, sorry, between 3:53 and 6:23. Trump attorney one, because they have tape and it's fucking time stamped.
Trump Attorney 1 located 38 documents with classified documents inside the boxes, which Attorney 1 removed and placed in a red weld folder. That's the part where they, the, the fact that it's in a red weld means they know it's classified. It has not been declassified. Trump never made a claim that it was declassified. The fact that they put it in that, and they've had this conversation, he spoke with his attorney. He did not have to bring this, you know, they didn't have to wrap this shit up. It, it was legitimately declassified. Trump knew it wasn't. Contact Nada asked him to bring clear duct tape to the storage room, which Nada did. Trump during one used the clear duct tape to seal the red weld folder with the documents with classification markings inside. Awareness of guilt. After Trump attorney one finished sealing the red weld folder containing the documents with classification markings as he, that he found inside of Trump boxes, Nada took Trump attorney one to a dining room in the Mar-a-Lago club to meet with Trump. After Trump attorney one confirmed that he was finished with his search of the Mar-a-Lago room, Trump asked, did you find anything? Is it bad? Good. Trump and attorney one then discuss what to do with the Redwell folder containing documents, classification markings. Trump attorney one uh, should bring them to his hotel room and put them in a safe there. Uh, during the conversation, Trump made a plucking motion as memorialized by Trump one. He made a funny motion as though, well, okay, why don't you take them with you to your hotel room? Like if there's anything really bad in there, like, you know, pluck it out. And that was the motion that he made. Oh. Why don't you take them with you to your hotel room? And if there's anything bad, like pluck it out. And that was the motion. He didn't say that. Like remove anything. Take this to your hotel room. Slit it open. Get some new tape. Maybe take it out. First of all, too fucking late, dummy. They gave him the envelope. Once you've wrapped it, they're going to know. The, the full force of the FBI and the CIA and the U.S. government is going to tell if you try to steam open a fucking envelope, dum-dum, much less cut clear tape from it and reseal it. What a dickhead. <laughs> um, congratulations, maggots. Your hero is an absolute moron. On all fronts. Who apparently has never had the, the, the fucking focus or ability to even sit through a single episode of of Homeland or Law and Order, for fuck's sake. That evening, Trump attorney, one, contacted the Department of Justice and requested that an FBI agent meet him at the Mar-a-Lago Club the next day, June 3rd, so that he could turn over the documents to the May 11 subpoena. Uh, responsive to the May 11 subpoena. Also that evening, Trump attorney, one, contacted another Trump attorney, Trump attorney, three, and... Asked her if she would come to mar log Club next morning to act as a custodian of records and sign a certification. You sign this. I'm not signing it. He made a plucking motion. This is not my problem anymore. Jesus Christ. Search for documents, classification markings, and responses to that. Trump attorney three, whom had no role in the review of Trump's boxes in the storage room, agreed. Sucker! The next day, on June 3rd, 2022... At Trump Attorney 1's request, Trump Attorney 3 signed a certification of the custodian records of the office of Donald J. Trump and took it to the Mar-a-Lago Club to provide it to the Department of Justice and FBI. In the certification, Trump Attorney 3, who performed no search of Trump's boxes, had not reviewed the May 11 subpoena, and had not reviewed the contents of the Redwell folder, stated, among other things, that based upon the information that had been provided to her, A, a diligent search was conducted of the boxes that were moved from the White House to Florida, B, this search was conducted after receipt of the subpoena in order to locate any and all documents that were responsive to the subpoena, and C, any and all responsive documents accompany this certification. These statements were false because, among other reasons, Trump had directed NADA to move boxes before the Trump Attorney 1's review so that many boxes were not searched and many documents responsible to the May 11 subpoena could not be found, and in fact were not found by Trump Attorney 1. Shortly after Trump Attorney 3 executed the false certification, <laughs> ouch, on June 3rd, Trump Attorney 1 and 2, I'm to hope, met uh, Thing 1 and Thing 2, met at Trump Mar-a-Lago Club with personnel from the Department of Justice and FBI. Trump Attorney 1 and 2, or sorry, 1 and 3, turned over the Red Weld folder containing documents with classification markings, as well as the false certification signed by Trump Attorney 3 as custodian of record. Trump, who had delayed his departure from the Mar-a-Lago Club, joined Trump Attorney 1 and 3 for some of the meeting. Trump claimed to the Department of Justice uh, and FBI that he was, quote, an open book. Earlier that day, Nada and others loaded several of Trump's boxes along with other items on an aircraft that flew Trump and his family north for the summer. The court authorized search of Mar-a-Lago. 
In July 2022, the FBI and grand jury obtained and reviewed surveillance video from the Mar-a-Lago Club showing the movement of boxes set forth above. On August 8th, the FBI executed a court-authorized search warrant at the Mar-a-Lago Club. The search warrant authorized the FBI to search for and seize, among other things, all documents with classification markings. During the execution of the warrant at the Mar-a-Lago Club, the FBI seized 102 documents with classification markings in Trump's office and storage room as follows. Trump's office, 27 documents, 6 top secret, 18 secret, 3 confidential. Storage room, 75 documents. Top secret, 11. Secret, 36. Confidential, 28. The uh, willful retention of national defense information. Counts 1 through 31. <laughs> the fruits of crime, don't you know? The fruits count counts 1 through 31. Dig in, kids. <sighs> the general allegations of this indictment are realleged and fully incorporated here by reference. On or about the date set forth in the table above in Palm Beach County in the Southern District of Florida and elsewhere, the defendant, Donald J. Trump, having unauthorized possession of, access to, and control over documents related to the national defense, did willfully retain the documents and failed to deliver them to the office and employee of the United States entitled to receive them. That is, Trump, without authorization, retained at the Mar-a-Lago Club documents relating to the national defense, including the following. One, January 20th to August 8th, uh, 21 to 22, top secret, no foreign, special handling. Document uh, dated May 3rd, 2018, concerning White House intel briefing related to various foreign countries. Number two, top uh, uh, January, the, the time will be the same on these because it's from when to when. Top, and then the, the time will change later um, after the, on some of these things that he, I guess, turned over weren't, this is all the stuff that was after he allegedly uh, he said, we, I'm an open book and we gave everything because that's when it became a crime when he ceased to be cooperating and was lying and holding these things. So this, all the other documents that he shouldn't have had access to and that might be fucking missing. That's another story. We'll see if he gets there, but they're all January 20th, 2021 to August 8th, 2022. Uh, the last day he could have declassified to when he actually, they searched Mar-a-Lago. Document dated May 9th, 2018, concerning White House intelligence briefing related to various foreign countries. So he's carrying, he's, he's stealing PDBs, it looks like. Undated document concerning military capabilities of foreign country in the United States with handwritten annotation and black marker. Document dated May 6th, 2019, concerning White House intelligence briefing related to foreign countries, including military activities and planning of foreign countries. Document dated June 2020, concerning nuclear capabilities of a foreign country. Document dated June 4, 2020, concerning White House intelligence briefing related to various foreign countries. Document dated October 21st, 2018, concerning communication with the leader of a foreign country. Document dated October 4, 2019, concerning military capabilities of a foreign country. By the way, they're not making a case whether these folks are, are allies or enemies. And in, and in many ways, it's bad if an enemy knows what we know about their capabilities, but they know their capabilities, so it's kind of immaterial. It's, it is very different if these are allies and he's showing this to enemies. That's way scarier and way more in line with the kind of shit he's, he's won't to do. Um, undated document concerning military attacks by foreign country. Document dated November 2017 concerning military capabilities of a foreign country. Undated document concerning military contingency plan of the United States. Pages of uh, undated document concerning projected mil regional military capabilities of foreign country and the United States. Undated document concerning military capabilities of foreign country and the United States. Document dated January 2020 concerning military options of a foreign country and potential effects on the United States interests. Document dated February 2020 concerning policies in a foreign country. Document dated De December 2019 concerning foreign country support of terrorist acts against the United States interests. Uh, to, let's see, document dated January 2020 concerning military capabilities of a foreign country. Document dated March 2020 concerning military operations against the United States forces and others. Uh, undated document concerning nuclear weaponry of the United States. Number 19, kids. Undated document concerning nuclear weaponry of the United States. That's that. That's a biggie. That's going to be hard to recover from. That's going to be a rough one, even amongst the people who want to support him, want to gargle his balls at every turn. Undated document concerning nuclear weaponry of the United States, marked secret, 
formerly classified DATA. Basically, it's it's older inf information, but still secret. Okay. Top secret. Undated document concerning timeline details of attack in a foreign country. Secret. No foreign. Meaning no foreign intelligent, you know, no foreigners can see this. Uh, undated document concerning military capabilities of foreign countries. Document dated 2019 concerning regional military activities of a foreign country. Document dated August 30th, 2019 concerning White House intelligence briefing related to foreign countries with handwritten annotations and black mark marker. Meaning that not only is this stuff in there, this top secret special handling, but it also had extra notes in there of stuff that may have been said but not written down. Undated document concerning military activity of a foreign country. Uh, document dated October 24th, 2019 concerning military activity of foreign countries and the United States. Uh, document dated November 7th, 2019, concerning military activity of foreign countries in the United States. Document dated November 2019, concerning military activity of foreign countries. Document dated October 18th, 2019, concerning White House intelligence briefing related to various countries. Document dated October 18th, 2019, concerning military capabilities of a foreign country. Document dated October 15th, 2019, concerning military activity in a foreign country. Document dated uh, February 2017, concerning military activity in a foreign country. All in violation of Title 18, United States Code, uh, uh, Section 793E. Count 32. The general allegations of this indictment are realigned and fully incorporated here by reference. Conspiracy and its, object uh, and its objects. The conspiracy. Oh, fuck, man. No collusion, just conspiracy. The conspiracy and its objects. From on or about May 11th, 2022 through in or around August 2022, in Palm Beach County, in South District of Florida, and elsewhere, the defendants, Donald Trump and Waltine Nauta, did knowingly com combine, conspire, confederate, and agree with each other, and with others known and unknown to the grand jury, to engage in misleading conduct uh, toward another person and corruptly persuade another person to withhold a record document and other object from an official proceeding. That's where they bullshit um, attorney number three. Um, to abruptly conceal a record, document, and other object from official proceeding, and, and of course hide from attorney two and keep attorney one from even coming by, or no, well, the other way around. Keep attorney two from coming by and having attorney one um, look through the shit uh, after they've moved stuff. The purpose of the uh, purpose of the conspiracy. The purpose of the conspiracy was for Trump to keep classified documents he had taken from with him from the White House and to hide and conceal them from the federal grand jury. The manner and means of the conspiracy. The manner and means by which the defendants sought to accomplish the objects and purpose of the conspiracy included, among other things, the following. Suggesting that Trump Attorney 1 falsely represent to the FBI and grand jury that Trump did not have documents called for by the May 11th subpoena. Moving boxes, boxes, boxes of documents to conceal them from Attorney 1, the FBI, and the grand jury. Um, C. Suggesting that Trump Attorney 1 hide or destroy documents called for by the May 11th subpoena. D. Providing the FBI and grand jury just some of the documents called for by the May 11 subpoena while Trump claimed he was cooperating fully. E. Causing a false certification to be submitted to the FBI and grand jury representing that all documents with classification markings had been produced when, in fact, they had not. And F. Making false and misleading statements to the FBI all in violation of Title 18, United States Code, Section 1512K. K? K. Count 33. Ha, 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 ha. 33. The general allegations of this, this withholding a document or record. Um, this is, we know when. Uh, Walt Nada and Donald Trump did knowingly engage in misleading conduct towards another person, knowingly corrupting, uh, corruptly persuade and attempt to persuade another person with intent to cause and induce any person to withhold a record document or other object from official proceeding. That means bullshitting your attorney into lying on a document uh, with the knowledge, with the knowledge of another person that's provable. Trump attempted to persuade Trump attorney one to hide and conceal documents from the federal jury, uh, grand jury. And two, Trump had not had misled attorney one by moving boxes that contained documents with classification so that the Trump attorney one could not find the documents and produce them to the federal grand jury, all in violation of Title 18, United States Code, sections 1512B, 2A, and 2. Uh, count 34. Corruptly concealing a document or record. The general allegations of this diamond are realigned. Okay, realigned, okay. okay. Uh, Donald Trump and Waltine Nada did corruptly conceal a document and other object and attempt to do so with the intent to impair the object's integrity and availability for use in an official proceeding. That is, Trump and Nada hid and concealed boxes that contained documents with classification markings from Attorney 1 so that Trump Attorney 1 would not find the documents and produce them to a federal grand jury. All in violation of Title 18, United States Code, Sections 1512C1 1 1 and 2. Count 35. Remember when this was seven counts earlier? No, okay. 
The general allegations are there. Yeah. Donald Trump and Walt T. Nada did knowingly conceal, cover up, falsify, and make false entry in any record or document and tangible object with the intent to impede, obstruct, and influence the investigation and proper administration of any matter within the jurisdiction of the Department and Agency of the United States and in relation to and contemplation of any such matter. That is, during a federal criminal investigation being conducted by the FBI, Trump and Nada hid, concealed, covered up from the FBI Trump's continued possession of documents with classification markings at the Mar-a-Lago Club, and two, Trump caused a false certification to be submitted to the FBI, all in violation of Title 18, United States Code Sections 1519 and 2. 36, Donald Trump and Waltine Nada, in a matter, uh, in a matter within the jurisdiction of the judicial branch, and executive branch of the United States government did knowingly and willfully falsify, conceal, and cover up by any trick, scheme, and device. Ooh, you schemey, tricky dick. Device a, uh, hold on one second. Um, let's see. I've been involved in the two greatest scams in American history. Uh huh. In a matter within the jurisdiction of the judicial branch and executive branch, judicial branch, and executive branch of the United States government, did knowingly and willfully falsify, conceal, cover up by any trick scheme or device a material and device a material fact that is during a federal grand jury investigation and a federal criminal investigation being conducted by the FBI Trump and Nada hid and concealed from the grand jury and the FBI Trump's continued possession of documents with classification markings all in, in violation of title 18 United States code sections 100 and 1001 A1 and 2 false statements and representations Donald Trump ooh that Walt doesn't even get a ride along in this one you know here i am like an idiot in a matter within the just the jurisdiction of the judicial branch and the executive branch uh, i'll say it right i'm reading very fast judicial branch and executive branch of the united states government did knowingly and willfully make and cause to be made materially false fictitious and fraudulent statement about the fruits of crime um and representation that is during a federal grand jury investigation and a federal crime investigation being conducted by the fbi trump caused the following false statements and representations to be made to the grand jury and the FBI in a sworn certification sworn certification uh, ex executed by Trump attorney 3 a diligent search this is the stuff we saw before that she admitted to which he instructed her he set up the situation where she unknowingly lied now a message uh, addendum note side uh, as an attorney you should not sign uh, these documents um, and documents like this unless you participated in that. And if somebody who participated in the search is saying you sign it, um, just, I, just, I'm not going to say, I was there. I saw what happened. You sign it. Just say we told you what they said. They're setting you up, dumb, dumb. <laughs> so, all right. The statements and representations set forth above were false, as Trump knew, because Trump had directed the boxes to be moved from the storage removed from the storage room before Trump Attorney One conducted the June 2nd, 2022 search for documents with classification markings, so that Trump Attorney One search would not and did not include all of Trump's boxes that were removed from the White House. Trump Attorney One search would not and did not locate all documents responsive. By the way, you, uh, congratulations on folks on being uh, the few people in the world right now who've had this whole thing read to them. You're welcome. Like, subscribe, give a thumbs up. All right. Um, responsive to the May 11th subpoena and all responsive documents were not provided to the FBI and the grand jury with certification. In fact, after June 3rd, 2022, more than 100 documents with classification markings remained at the Mar-a-Lago Club until the FBI search on August 8th, all in violation of Title 18, U.S. Code, Sections 1001A2 and 2. Um... Count 38, false statements and representations. Here's where Walt gets his own ride alone. The general allegations, blah, 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 participated in the voluntary. Okay, on May 26, 2022, Nauta participated, I could speak. I'm reading way too fast. Participated in a voluntary interview with the FBI. During the interview, the FBI explained to Nauta that the FBI was investigating how classified documents had been kept at the Mar-a-Lago Club. And the FBI asked Nauta questions about the location and movement of Trump's boxes before Trump provided 15 boxes to NARA on January 17th, 2022. Nauta was represented by counsel, and the FBI advised Nauta that the interview was voluntary and that he could leave at any time. The FBI also advised Nauta that it was a criminal offense to lie to the FBI. The interview was recorded. On or about May 26, 2022, in Palm Beach County, in the Southern District of Florida and elsewhere, the defendant, Walt Nada, in a manner within the jurisdiction of the executive branch of the United States uh, government, did knowingly and willfully 
make a materially false, fictitious, or fraudulent statement and representation. That is, in a voluntary interview during a federal criminal investigation being conducted by the FBI, Nauta was asked the following questions and gave the following false answers. Does any, are you aware of any boxes being brought to his home, his suite? No. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm not going to say this is a misread. I'm not, I, you know, he, this, this, it's underlined. These are his answers. No. And then, by the way, three more dots because they talk about this is stuff that's redacted. Question. All right. All right. So, uh, so to the best of your knowledge, you're saying that those boxes that you brought onto the truck, first time you ever laid eyes on them, was just the day of when Trump employee two needed you to, correct, to take them. Okay. Question. In knowing that we're trying to track the life of these boxes and where they could have been kept and stored and all that kind of stuff, mm -hmm, do you have any information that could, that would, that could help us understand, like, where they were kept, how they were kept, were they secured, were they locked, uh, something that makes the intelligence community feel better about these things, you know? I wish, I wish I could tell you, I don't know, I, I don't, I honestly just don't know. He honestly did know. He knew a lot. As a matter of fact, he was the fucker who moved them. And what, so, uh, redacted, and what, uh, or, or, this is just other parts of the interview. Like they moved on. These are just relevant parts, but there's a whole interview. There's a whole transcript. This lets you know. And what? So, so you only, so you only have, uh, you only saw the 15, 15, 17 boxes. Mm -hmm. The day of the move, even they just, they just showed up that day. They were in Pine Hall, Trump employee too. Just asked me like, Hey, can we move some boxes? Okay. And I was like, okay. So you didn't know, you had, had no idea how they got there before. No. The underscored statements and represented, uh, representations were false as not a new because one, Nada did in fact know that the boxes in Pine Hall had come from the storage room as Nada himself, with the assistance of Trump employee two, had moved the boxes from the storage room to Pine Hall. And two, Nada had observed the boxes, uh, observed the boxes in and moved them to various locations at the Mar-a-Lago club. Like, there was never a time when the majority of these boxes were moved that Nada wasn't involved in moving, moving them. And this motherfucker says, no. There's video, you dumb... Oh. And then uh, a true bill or whatever, they redacted the name of the foreperson of the grand jury. This is indicative of what they said and what the grand jury said. And here's Jack Smith's um, signature on there. And then the following, the last four payments is uh pages is the kind of jurisdictional stuff how long like uh yeah united states of america versus donald trump and walt nada and they're together oh god please like let them both be sitting there so trump and his body man have to both sit there Ugh. 10 minutes till jack speaks okay oh i'm am i missing it already am i borrowing your time all right, we got through it though. I'm just saying. Jack Smith will be speaking at 3 p.m. Eastern Time today. Woohoo! Um, yeah, so please, Hal's reading the entire thing uh, to us, a professional actor. That's pretty good. Presser in five minutes. Okay, yes, four. Okay, we're almost there. We're, the last part of it. Okay, um, let's see. This is the uh, West Palm Beach, is the court division where they filed it. New defendant, no. <laughs> They're not adding anybody. Uh, the case will take. Um, the case will take 21 days for the parties to try. So they're expecting a good three weeks um, plus um, for, you know, uh, a month uh, with a couple of days off. Oh, and here they go. Defendant, case number one, counts one through 31. Willful retention, uh, this 18 USC. Max term, 10 years. Mandatory minimum of prison, if applicable, not applicable. Max supervised release, three years. Max fine, $250,000. Count 32, max term of imprisonment, 20 years. Mandatory minimum imprisonment, not applicable. Max supervised release, three years. Max fine, 250. Count 33, uh, max term of imprisonment, 20 years. Uh, max supervised release, three years, okay. Um, 34, corruptly concealing a document or record, 20 years in jail. Ma count 35, total term of imprisonment, 20 years. Count 36, term of imprisonment, five years. Phew, let's take it down. Count 37, false statements represented, five years. Defendant's name, Walt Nada. 
20 years, 20 years, 20 years, 20 years, five years, five years. That's the, oh, wait a minute. One, two, three, four, four, five, six. Okay, so six counts for him. And I think the reason why people were like, oh, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So these are the seven. Um, and they're, because they're grouping his sentencing in counts one through three, 31 of the indictment. That one through, they're counting this as one. Willful retention of national defense or information. So it's like a big pile of the shit. He knew he was doing this one crime, even if it involved a lot of separate documents. You can't, you can't imprison somebody for each page. It's the idea of the secrets that they were doing, right? Somebody should tell this to fucking Assange so he can come over here and face justice like Reality Winner did and like Chelsea Manning did and fucking stood up for what they believed in. Fuck that dude. Anyways... Um, there you go. Uh, we're out. We, I went an hour long, but that's okay. Cause you guys are wonderful. And, um, I'll let you guys go. You guys can all go watch, um, the, the remaining stuff. And, um, uh, it's going to take, it's going to be the trial of the century. It's going to be the trial of the century. And I will see you guys later on this afternoon. Take care of yourself. Take care of somebody else. I'll see you at three o'clock. Holy shit. I got to go watch the thing too. This is fucking, this is pretty fucking cool. And, uh, oh, one more thing.